So I think I will uh, go ahead and call the June 21st uh, meeting of the Redevelopment Board to order. Uh, so per the governor's extension of the remote meeting provisions, um, this meeting is being held remotely via Zoom. Uh, the uh, governor's recent order amended the open meeting law to allow remote meetings uh, in lieu of holding meetings in a public, uh, excuse me, publicly accessible physical location. For this meeting, the ARB is convening via Zoom as posted on the town's website, identifying how the public may join. Please note that this meeting is being recorded and that some attendees are participating via video conference. Accordingly, please be aware that other people may be able to see you and take care not to screen share your computer. Anything that you broadcast may be captured by recording. So allow me to verify that all members of the board are present by taking a roll call uh, attendance. We'll start with Ken Lau. Present. Jean Benson. Present. Melissa Tentacolos. Present. And Rachel Zemberry, I am here as well. And from the Department of Planning and Community Development, we have Jennifer Raitt. Present. And Kelly Linema. Present. Great, thank you very much. So we will uh, begin our uh, meeting this evening by discussing the Redevelopment Board Committee appointments. And uh, Jenny and Kelly prepared a document for us to review, uh, to run through all of the different uh, town committees um, for which the Redevelopment Board either has a seat or a representative currently um, filling that, that seat on the board. And Jenny, I will turn it over to you. Thank you, Rachel. Um, so I, I posted a fairly simple document um, that just simply outlines that there are currently really six um, committees that relate to the redevelopment board. Um, many of them are frankly your own committees. <laughs> so, um, the ones, however, that you have already appointed folks uh, to include Envision Arlington. Uh, most recently, Alex Bagnall is the ARB designee to that, um, the standing committee. Um, then we have the Open Space Committee, and that is still Wendy Richter, um, who it serves as a liaison on behalf of the ARB. Um, and then I'll just skip down to a different committee outside of the ARB's typical committees, which is the Community Preservation Committee and Co Community Preservation Act Committee rather. And that one has been Gene um, and he's served now for pretty much the entire time he's been on the board, I believe. I think uh, there was like sort of a, a, little, a little brief period of time with uh, a temporary appointment um, and then Gene has taken it on. Um, and then, David Watson had been serving as the zoning bylaw working group uh, designee from the ARB, but of course is no longer on the board. Um, and then uh, the two other committees are the master plan implementation committee, which has been vacant actually since Andrew departed the board and the housing plan implementation committee, which has actually never had anybody other than Andrew serving, um, but uh, nobody else had ended up attending those meetings either. And then the last one on this list that I posted is the a committee that was recently formed out of town meeting, but it's, you know, sort of upcoming. There's nothing, there's nothing formal to apply to yet, but I, I figured I would put it on the list, which was a committee uh, that came out of a warrant article to basically study uh, remote participation um, and to, um, I think, identify ways to do remote meetings moving forward and engagement and outreach um, effectively. And the ARB has a seat on that committee as well. So I figured I would just put that on the list in case there had been any immediate interest. Now, I will say that I had intended for us to have this conversation once all five members were seated and I'm still awaiting the final word on the gubernatorial designee to this board. Um, until that time, I would just note that that individual may want to serve on a committee. So um, I don't see any reason why we shouldn't still proceed with this conversation. But um, the other thing I want to note is that 
uh, the Housing Plan Implementation Committee, generally speaking, has been meeting the first Thursday of every month at around 7.30 p.m. That um, has pretty much held for quite some time. Um, it was at Town Hall, of course, and now it's uh, been on Zoom. They meet, their next meeting would be the first one in July. The Master mm -hmm. Plan Implementation Committee generally meets quarterly and almost always tries to meet before town meeting because they end up formulating a report to town meeting. Um, and then the, um, I think we talked about this last time, but just to recap, the Community Preservation Act Committee basically gets pretty active um, with reviewing both uh, the preliminary applications, which occur usually in October through December. Um, and then they get even more engaged from January through March when they're reviewing the full application and often splitting off into smaller groups to meet with applicants. Um, and I, Jean can of course fill in any blanks on sort of the, the activities of that committee. Um, the Envision Arlington is not one to talk about. So the Zoning Bylaw Working Group, they, um, they have been meeting the first Wednesday morning of every month um, at 8.30 in the morning. And also similar to HPIC, had been at town hall and then has been on Zoom. They haven't met the last two times, mostly because of town meeting and waiting for that to be over. Also waiting for the new assistant director to start. Um, and I just, uh, she will be starting actually on Monday, this coming Monday. So I will be planning to hold a zoning bylaw working group meeting the first Wednesday of July. Um, so, <clears throat> I'm glad to answer any questions about any of the committees and uh, you know, mostly hope that those who are not currently active with any of these subgroups might uh, become a little more interested in them or um, at least ten maybe attend a meeting before, decide before committing <laughs> that, you know, shop around if you want to. Sure. Um, before we go, go to um, other folks, I'll just note that I had put my hand up for the master plan Many of the last time we had this discussion, I think in the yes. fall. So if nobody else is interested in that, I'm more than happy to, to serve on that quarterly group. But I'm also, if somebody else is, has a burning desire, I'm also happy to, um, to step aside. So Jean, I saw you had your hand up. Um, yeah, first on the Community Preservation Act Committee, to add to what um, Jenny said, aside from reviewing the preliminary applications and then the final applications and making recommendations to town meeting. We often split up into small groups and go and look at some of the sites where um, um, applications have been proposed for or meet with some of the applicants outside the committee at the sites. And additionally, there are um, public hearings on the final applications where the applicants come in and each makes a presentation about their proposal and the public is able uh, to comment on that. And as Jenny said, that usually picks up in the fall when preliminary applications are due and then gets um, um, busier between late fall and March when we make the decisions and put together the recommendation for a town meeting. It's, it's very well supported by staff of the um, town who do a great job assisting um, the committee. Um, so at my very first meeting as a member of the redevelopment board, Ken turned to me and said, I've been on the Community Preservation Act committee. Would you like to take over for me instead? And I said, sure. So I've done it for a little bit over four years now. And there are great people on the committee. It's been very instructive, a good way to learn a lot about um, the town. On the other hand, I think it's time for me to pass it on to somebody and for me to volunteer for um, one of the other committees. And I had um, let Jenny know in the past that I was interested in being on the zoning bylaw working group, which is one that David had um, been on before and had left. So that would be um, my preference for the one that I'd like to move on to. Great, thank you, Jean. 
uh, Ken, did you have any any thoughts, any any committees that you might be interested in um, and perhaps serving on or uh, any questions about? Uh, no, I support you in the uh, in the committee you want to go to. Um, I thought there was one other committee that uh, um, that was there that was meeting once a month which was the, uh, what you call it, the Heights. Uh, yeah, I was uh, gonna mention that. Yeah, it's the Arlington Heights Neighborhood Action, Action Plan, Plan Implementation, Implementation Committee. Committee. Is that helpful. still going on? So Rachel Rachel has been participating on that committee. It is, it's not reading, meeting quite as regularly. Um, and there was a big break obviously taken during, um, during uh, the uh, town, town meeting. Um, but if that's something you're interested in, um, Ken, I'm happy to, to step off if you'd like to step on onto that one. It's, it's been, it was very active pre-pandemic. Okay, uh, either one, or I, I wouldn't mind going back to uh, uh, the CPC, but I, I knew Gene was doing such a great job. I didn't wanna uh, get there, you know, he was just doing a smash job. So I figured, you know, but if he's going to uh, step down, I wouldn't mind going going back to that. Either one. Okay, great. Melissa, did you have any any thoughts, um, any questions about any of these committees, any that that you um, think that you'd like to become involved in? I mean, I would consider the master plan implementation committee, but. Um, in terms of my time commitment, I just feel like I'm a little cautious about that because um, sometimes I don't, I feel like I would over promise if I could do them and then not be able to make them. So how, what that has one's been quarterly. the ARBs? Yeah, that one's quarterly. Okay, well, that's a little bit more reasonable. Are most of them monthly though? Uh, I mean, I, sorry, go ahead. They, they meet quarterly. Uh, Melissa, there's not all there's not them? a monthly there's not a monthly meeting at all. Oh, oh they only okay. meet quarterly, and they tend to meet before town meeting. And it, I would say that uh, usually at the prior meeting they schedule the next meeting. It's somewhat it's not a regular set meeting um, for the group because they they would prefer to do it that way. Usually things change. So like for example, the last time they met was like a a very different time than normal. It was like a Friday at like 2 p.m., which is a, very, a highly unusual time for that group. That, that, that's not emblematic of their regular meeting. I think they were meeting usually on a Thursday evening, mostly because we were at town hall until seven. So they would start at like six um, or 6.30. Um, and again, it was quarterly. And usually there's a meeting um, before town meetings. So definitely count on you know, um, a meeting usually in March um and then one usually in the summer but i want to be clear that's for the master plan master plan implementation, implementation committee. committee the other ones yeah, not not arlington monthly. heights what's that the, the other committees are monthly um generally yeah. speaking yeah, there's yeah. th there's scheduled meetings that people generally stick to the meeting date and time uh like the housing plan implementation committee and the zoning bylaw working group the community preservation act committee they all have a regular meeting date and time like a monthly one this one is a little more this one is quarterly they have been since the since the start of that committee actually in 2015 and uh, but they tend to jump around with the meeting days and times so i guess there would be flexibility melissa in terms yeah. of people's availability and the envision arlington one i know we have point uh, appointed someone does it is it helpful for another ARB person to be there occasionally or how does, you know, kind of that work? It's not, there's not a seat for an ARB member. It's mm -hmm. just a, a designee, a, a, somebody who's a designee of the ARB and that person is Alex Bagnall. So yeah, what we've done in the past is have like Alex might come to a future ARB meeting and sort of report out on Envision Arlington standing committee activities. Like we've had, uh, though not in a while, Wendy Richter has talked about open space committee. Um, so that that's, those are, those, that's the way that we handle those right. committees. Okay. They're more of our designees, but not a direct seat. 
So Melissa, if you're interested in the master um, plan committee, um, I'm happy to continue with the Arlington Heights implementation committee. Um, if, if that's one you'd like, like because that one is monthly. Um, so if the master plan at quarterly is something you're interested in and that schedule works with you, that, that would be absolutely fine with, with me. Are you sure? Absolutely. I'm, I, yeah. I enjoy that. I enjoy that committee. So I'm, I'm happy to continue on. Okay. If can you I, I mean I'm assuming we all want to take responsibility and take some role with these committees, correct? And that, you know, as part of being on the ARB, I'd like to, you know, can contribute to one of the committees. So I think that might be most feasible for me at this point. Great. And Ken, you had said that you'd be happy to jump back into the um, Community Preservation Act committee. Sure. Okay. So I think the one that we don't have, um, a direct, well, there's two, uh, the Housing Plan Implementation Committee, um, which I think, Jenny, if we could speak to that one, I know that that's going to be um, pretty active given the, the current, um, I know that at least um, several of us have been participating in the, the public process so so far. Um, so I'm sure that that one will be pretty active as we start heading into the fall and um, winter preparing for town meeting 2022. Um, so perhaps if we could have that conversation at our next meeting when we hopefully have our, our fifth member um, with us, uh, if the rest of the board feels comfortable deferring that one. Okay, um, and then the remote participation study committee. Um, you know, I I think that one. Um, you know, I'd certainly be happy to um, to speak to speak to <laughs> since that'll mostly affect you know um, as we're running the meeting and some of the the other items. I'm I'm happy to once there's a little more information about what that will entail. Um, participate unless there's another board member who um, would would like to be a part of that one. Ed, and I, I don't have much information okay. about that other than directly what I saw passed at town meeting. Uh, other than that, I don't have anything else, but I figured if we would could, you know, think about that. Okay, great. So we'll, we'll postpone the conversation about the HPIC once the new member is on. Okay, great. And then for all the other appointments, um, really it's just the CPA committee. I think, um, Jean, if you, uh, you're officially sort of resigning. I will send a letter to the CPA committee chair uh, with regard to Kin's um, appoint, uh, the recommendation of this board to appoint Kin to that committee. Do we have to take a vote? Get back to you, Kin, on the term. What's that? Do we have to take a vote? You'll need to take a vote, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I would suggest you just vote on the whole, right. on everything. Once we have the, you know, the, the new member, in uh, present next week or next meeting in a couple of weeks. Yeah, in July. Yep. Great, any other discussion on the, uh, on the board committees? Okay, uh, so we will now move to agenda item number two, which is the ARB properties update. And I'll turn it over to Jenny. Thanks, Rachel. Um, so this this is really a brief update. Um, I know that a couple of you have asked about 23 Maple Street and um, the Central School and how that is progressing. So I'll just uh, say that 23 Maple Street at this point is um, occupied by DPW, uh, some DPW staff, inspectional services staff, um, and engineering staff, um, as well as some IT staff. So a number of departments that had been um, or will be need to be relocated as a result of both the high school construction as well as the DPW uh, town yard renovation have moved into the 23 Maple Street building. And they'll be there, as you know, from uh, the, the agreement that you signed um, or allowed us to sign, um, they will be there for the, for the foreseeable future, 18 to 24 months until the, you know, pretty much the town yard is finished construction. Um, and at this point, I haven't heard um, a lot of issues from any of the neighbors about traffic or, 
um, matters like that. I think that there was something actually posted on the website uh, indicating to people that the, those offices have since moved to 23 Maple Street and how uh, customers can access their services, uh, where to go and what to do. Um, and I haven't, I haven't had a lot of other feedback about that at this point in time. Jean, do you want to? Just, just two quick that? things. One, yeah. I came off uh, yesterday and the sign is up in front, yeah. limiting parking to 15 minutes, which was one thing we discussed. So that was nice. I just wondered, I think if I remember correctly, they had to do some work to make it um, handicapped accessible. And mm -hmm. I just wondered whether that's been completed. Yeah, they completed all the work inside of the building, including a lot of work to the floors. Um, you know, a number of uh, various things had to be repaired, the ADA accessibility improvements, a door, the ramp, um, and related signage. And that's all been completed. Most of it was completed in-house by facility staff. Because I, I may have missed it, but I didn't see anything at the front indicating where the ADA entrance was. So mm. if it's, yeah, I think that um, if it's I not think there, there should now be a sign that indicates that you need to enter the the main entrances in the back okay. um, in order to access, for example, inspectional services. And I think that they've maybe just today installed a drop box um, for like contractors and others. So I think they're still they're still getting set up there and established. But I'll check on I'll check back on that to confirm. Thanks. Any other questions about 23 Maple? Okay. Um, so the central school, uh, the renovation continues. Really, we've, uh, we, we weren't having a lot of issues, but we've now uh, entered a, a phase where there are definitely, uh, we are seeing some delays. And so the project is probably now delayed by about three months. And the anticipated end date is in August, potentially into September at this point in time. Um, additionally, we've had some really significant challenges with cooling in the building, particularly on the third and fourth floors, which is having an impact on um, our current tenants, the Arlington Center for the Arts and the Mystic River Watershed Association, which is really unfortunate um, to not be able to address those issues, though I am trying in working with the facilities department, as well as the contractor and our OPM um, who's managing the project. But there are a lot of issues. Um, and uh, I'm hopeful though, that we are gonna you know, finally see and progress towards the finished carpentry and the end of the construction. I'm basically finishing touches and details and colors and signage and things of that nature. You know, that's, that's where we're at right now. Um, but there's, uh, there have been, you know, some additional costs, change of pricing because of the amount of time it's taking, things of that nature. This is not, this is not that unique compared to other construction projects. We're seeing similar, similar things happening. Um, but uh, does anybody have any questions about the, the central school project? Uh, or Ken? Yeah. Jean, you were first. Um, oh, you go first, Kim, because mine isn't mine is about the central school, but not the project. So you can. Oh, okay. Um, when it gets to a certain point, is there a uh, possibility for us to walk through? Yeah, I was going to actually mention that um, if anybody would be interested in walking through the building, I can take you on a walkthrough of the property. I'm glad to coordinate that. Um, I know we were talking about it previously, but due to COVID, we were sort of unable to do that. But at this point, I'm happy to organize something like that. So I'll, I'll send a follow-up email to the group and see if we can schedule something. Would you? And it might, if it's if it's just you, you know, one-on-one -on -one individually, that's fine too. Would you be just send over the? Uh, you have a schedule. If you can send over the schedule, I can sort of point pick a point where along that schedule, I would like to I see it. I don't really, um, I, I mean, I have a, you mean the schedule of like the project schedule? Yeah. Oh, oh, sure. Yeah, I can send that around. Uh, you know, I, I rather, I don't want to see it when it's all uh, bare. I want to see it when it's close to enclosed and finished, you know. Just oh, to, well, that's going to be, big. that's going to be a, like a month or so from now. Um, I'll be here. So yeah, but I will, I'll send around the schedule and if you want to pick a time or pick a week, I guess I should say. Sure. 
that looks good to you for the kind of work you want to see, um, then let me know and I can coordinate with the OPM and the, uh, the super when it's happening. Okay. okay. Thank you. Yeah. Jean. So my central school, but not the project, has to do with on the Maple Street side, there's that semicircular driveway. And the CA tended to for runoff because there are a couple drains that, you know, surface drains mm -hmm. that go into it. I haven't looked at it this year, but last year it wasn't functioning as an infiltration base. And I would walk by days at a time and the water was just ponded up in there and probably a great breeding ground for mosquitoes. So I haven't looked at it uh, this year and probably with the drought, it's successfully soaking up water. But I think it's worth watching over the summer and fall to see if it's actually functioning as intended or not. And I may, if I see it's not, I may send you an email about it. Okay, it's yeah, it actually, it's, it's lacking plantings. Yes, um, it is. It looks pretty good. It's supposed to have plantings, but we were waiting to, for a point when it made sense to do that with the construction mm -hmm. project. And I think that with COVID, uh, you know, the garden club hasn't been very active on that one. So it's probably looking like that's a next year project, but um, I'll still keep in, keep in mind what you said. And I've had a couple of other people make some observations about um, the functionality of that, let's just say. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Yes, you're welcome. Um, and then the last property is Jefferson Cutter House, which, um, you know, the, the biggest update there is the Whittemore Park construction is underway, um, you may have noticed. Um, and we're looking forward to the project finally having started. This is just the first phase. We're only really into the first and second phases at this point, with the third phase basically being on hold and or may not, may not actually pick up and happen. The third phase was meant to be sort of the rear of the building um, and the sort of idea of uh, stairs and more of like a tricky uh, coordination with the butters um, and also with the Russell Common parking lot. Um, so at this point that is, that is temporarily postponed. Um, so we're focused on the first and second phases of the project. Um, I don't, I don't have a lot more to say about that particular property, but do you, does anybody have any questions? That, uh, the this is the, is that little stage by the corner and it include the seating along the edge of the retail area? Or am I mistaken? No, that was Sure. sure. So the second phase actually goes from the path, the path of the very front of the house. Um, right now, if you go down Pleasant or Mystic Street, um, the access to the walk, and then as part of doing that, we're creating a small seating area or like a garden with the garden um, that's just off the Beverly door on that side of the house. Um, and then we'll be relocating the Hovenus stone, the Allen Hovenus stone there, and um, having maybe a little bit more ornate plantings on that side of the house, um, just to sort of create this kind of quiet space um, within that, that little path right there. But the primary point of this portion of the project is to Improve the accessibility to the proportion of the house. It is largely funded with CDBG dollars um, to help promote the One more accessibility. Is that gonna, what we're doing there? That, so that rules out no the, beer garden there, right? The time period where oh, we it's uh, under construction. Um, but after that, I think it would be very accommodating for, you know, other community gatherings which could include a beer garden. Okay. So there's not any other questions about it. 
uh, in your mind that in the next, over the next, probably yet, but I, have a goal to train facilities department completely. Um, you may, some of you may recall that we used to actually have a paid staff person who was actually technically part of the department um, who actually operates. Um, and then we transitioned that slowly into the facilities department. And I think that uh, the overall maintenance of these properties has gotten uh, has gone to a higher level, uh, and that it would be helpful to all of the management of the three properties to, uh, collectively. And um, I would say that the longer term goal would be to transition these properties away from the redevelopment board as well. Um, in terms of like ownership um, because to these properties, yet we have sort of just a legacy of a connection to these properties, which has included, um, you may or may not know, um, but it includes us managing all of the rentals that happens at these properties, all of the management um, and coordination of any, you know, repairs, maintenance, capital requests. Um, it's, a, it's a fairly, um, and I can go deeper in terms of all of the, the, the level of responsibility. Um, I think that in the long term, and we can talk about this when I have something a little more solid to propose, but I think in the long term, um, transitioning these properties to facilities or another town department makes sense um, and that we can facilitate more of the programming and the planning, but do not need to directly uh, manage each property because without having the staff or the, frankly the capacity and the budget to really manage the properties properly, we, um, we're, we're put into a very tough situation. Like for example, uh, what I was just talking about with regard to the air conditioning situation at the central school. I have very limited ability to handle that issue directly due to budgetary limitations and staff capacity limitations. So, um, but yet we are technically responsible for the property. So um, I would say that in the long run, I think that this is a very good, this would be a very good plan for the board. And I will formalize this uh, in working with the town manager's office and the facilities department and bring it to the board for a future meeting for a discussion and a vote. Um, I'm also planning to engage town council in the conversation because we obviously have uh, some legal relationship uh, to all of these properties, including all of the leases um, and other other documents that I technically am the signatory for. So um, I'm glad to answer questions about this, but um, I feel as though this is a it, it's timely right now, mostly because of the you know timing of all of the projects and um, reopening of properties and um, and also just in terms of the budgetary issues that we are being faced with right now. Jean. Yeah, can you, let's just take 23 Maple Street as an example. Yeah. Um, we had to approve, we meaning the redevelopment board had to approve, you know, the end of the lease with the previous tenant and the temporary situation with some of the town departments. Now, if the ownership or were to shift, who would be making those decisions? Would that go to the select board to make those decisions? The town manager's office. The town manager currently has other properties under their authority and control and oversight. Okay. Um, it could also di just directly be the facilities department and then with any legal documents, it would be the town manager's office and town council. Um, so just simply default to an, an, you know the town other than the redevelopment board. And actually that's a very good example because in that situation we had a tenant who was there for uh, you know, almost two decades paying about, at the end of their lease, about $56,000, which included their ability to not only pay rent, but also to pay capital costs. And they had a building superintendent essentially taking care of all of the issues when they departed 
and we have town departments in there, we have not, we don't have any, we have a very limited income from them uh, staying at that building, as you know, um, it was about $14,000 um, and no capital contribution at that point. And of course, uh, we don't have personnel directly related to that property, except through uh, the facilities department. So I think, um, you know, that's a good, that's one of, of a couple of examples of sort of a transition of a number of renters in, and tenants in the various properties who are not, um, you know, they're, they're basically, it's, uh, you know, town departments rather than um, outside uh, entities, nonprofit organizations, et cetera, who have traditionally been renting from the town and perhaps more capable of paying um, what we are asking. Um, and we usually post the request for uh, lease proposals um, as part of, you know, a whole process to find new tenants. Uh, that's the traditional process. And as you recall, perhaps we actually went about that twice with 23 Maple Street and we're unable to find a suitable replacement tenant. So it's not as though we didn't lead ourselves into the situation we got into and we tried, but you know, it, it's hard to, again, without the right staff and the right capacity, it's hard to manage that um, appropriately. That's a, that's a very good example of a recent situation that really takes a hit on the Urban Renewal Fund, which is our primary source of funding to manage the properties. And by the way, when I say management, I mean that we're paying for, out of the Urban Renewal Fund, we pay for all, various contracts that include, uh, you know, snow removal, landscaping, um, uh, cleaning um, of all of the properties and all of the uh, offices in the properties, um, uh, supplies, toiletries, all of that stuff uh, that relate to any of the properties. So we're part of group purchasing contracts and we have to pay from the fund uh, to finance those uh, ongoing improvements, as well as all of the utility bills. <laughs> I don't want to get into that part. <laughs> Thanks, Jenny. But, I, think, I think that makes a lot of sense. And, yeah, so um, that's, that's the proposal. Okay. Great. Well, we'll look forward to seeing that at a at a future meeting then too. Okay. Excellent. Yeah. Um, just wanted to give you the heads up. Yeah, I appreciate that, Jenny. And I'm just gonna maybe be kind of a counter to that thought. And I was wondering, like, you know, kind of nationwide, if there's any other kind of best practices that we were looking, we should be looking at in terms of, you know, public owned facilities that actually do make money, and if there's a public use that might actually still have a little bit more value to it just I'm trying to think if um you know we're doing it in a traditional status quo way and it's not making money so we're just moving and we're shifting it to facilities or should we take this opportunity to explore some like kind of creative options um with these spaces and I don't know enough about how they're operated and the tenancy, but it does seem like there might be some opportunities out there that I haven't thought of. And I was just wondering what the exercise has been or if we could do some research like that. Um, that's a good question and a very good uh, counterpoint and one that I've been exploring for years now. Um, and uh, particularly with 23 Maple Street, I had hopes of transitioning that property in a very different way and had been actively working on that uh, with a number of different potential uh, proponents, but it didn't come to fruition. Um, the other property that I think has some potential to transition is the Jefferson Cutter House into something really potentially dynamic for the community. Right. Um, the Central School is something that, um, you know, I think is already headed into that transition in a positive way. We worked very actively to move the Arlington Center for the Arts there and helped them to leverage um, a, a state grant uh, for capital in order to make the improvements to the third and fourth floors uh, for them to be at the property. And I think that it's a, it's a good thing for ACA to be located there. Also with the central school renovation, you know, moving, basically allowing the council on aging to have the entire ground floor as well as the first floor space um, is, is frankly a bonus to the council on aging, uh, which had been, they had been looking for space pretty actively for, for quite some time. So, I mean, I think 
depending upon what we're talking about, there are good uses for any one of these buildings. They're not very large properties um, and they do have some limitations. Uh, once the transition happens of the, you know, the town yard being completed and the town offices leaving 23 Maple Street, I think that having this board engage in some conversations with the town manager's office about um, ways to repurpose that property would also be something that um, could be very interesting for the community as well. So I, I agree that there's some really, there are some really good best practices out there. Some of them we've explored, tried to find grant funding to make them happen. Um, but I, you know, I'm, I'm open to suggestions if you have any other ideas. Okay. And I don't think that I don't think that letting go that transitioning from the redevelopment board to another town entity means that we release our ability to participate in those conversations. I'm just simply saying that we don't have the right mechanism or structure in place to truly and, and appropriately manage those properties or provide the best customer service to the tenants who are at the properties right now. No, I understand that. I just think if it's under facility, it, it just becomes a different, um, you know, I guess, you know, kind of how they think of using space becomes a little different. As a redevelopment board, the idea of, you know, our charge is to create, you know, kind of the, the for lack of a better word, overused term, like the innovation. We're trying to create the new energy that kind of creates the vitality for the community. And maybe there are pockets um, within these buildings that we could do that. I'm just spitballing a little bit here, but I guess I'd like us to understand what some other possibilities might be before we just kind of say, okay, we're done managing these buildings. So let me, let me separate things out. Yeah. So the town manager would be, is in charge of the properties. Mm -hmm. Facilities would be managing the maintenance and all of that kind of stuff with the properties. They wouldn't be managing programs and tenants. Okay. That would still be, that would be under transition to the town manager's office in the, the again, this is me proposing something. I'm not, right. this is not final and this is also not yet in writing or, um, you know, something for you to bat around specifically yet, but I can, I can vet it a little bit further before bringing it back to the board. Um, but I just want to clarify those two distinct. Got it. Goals. Could facilities manage the day-to-day operations and yet the board retain ownership and control? Is that a possibility too? Possibly. I'll investigate the options and provide them to the board when I return um, at a future meeting. I mostly just wanted to bring this to your attention that I'm exploring this Thank transition you. due to a lack of capacity in the way of resources, both staff and funds. Thanks. Um, Melissa, I think you are somewhat, somewhat correct. Um, I think I think the, um, the town's already considering that their charge already. I mean, if you look at the the park where they had the the beer garden, you know, that that that's supposedly uh, the ARB's uh, property to manage, and they the select board never consulted us about having that beer garden. They just went and issued permits for it and they did it uh, like it was town property. So, which is fine. I'm, I think it was a good thing, but I'm not saying, uh, you know, uh, I think it's treated by the town already that way, sort of. There's, a, there's actually a complicated ownership arrangement in the park itself. <laughs> um, it's okay, well, maybe I picked the wrong the point. Redevelopment board and the MBTA, technically. Um, but I, I, not, I, I, I understand what you're talking about, Ken, which is just um, there are sort of these, uh, the sort of decision rights over things as well as the input sort of process. And I think that whatever, whatever happens in the future, making sure that the redevelopment board has a voice in those processes is what I'm hearing as being important. But um, I mostly wanted to raise this issue since we don't have something formal to review. Um, I'll come back having, you know, taken some of this feedback and your, um, your ideas and concerns also. I'll vet it a little bit more internally and come back with something for us to talk about. 
before anything happens, of course. That sounds great. Okay. Thank you so much, Jenny. Welcome. Any other questions on the uh, ARB properties before we move to agenda item three? Okay, uh, so we'll now move to the housing plan and open space and recreation plan updates. Back to you, Jenny. All right, so I mean, I think um, Rachel and Jean, I believe were the two members who attended the housing plan virtual community forum. I don't know if anybody else, Ken or Melissa, did you attend? I didn't actually see the whole room of people. Um, we had a really good meeting on June 9th. Um, it was really the beginning of an entire process, as I mentioned at our prior meeting. Um, we had about 50 people participating in the forum. Uh, the summary of the process was provided by Barrett Planning Group and Horsley Witten. Um, we also uh, talked about sort of, or reported out what was heard from various stakeholder interviews and a questionnaire that we had conducted with the community, as well as um, you know some sort of you know initial observations that they had of uh, of Arlington's housing um, situation, and then we ended up engaging in sort of small group breakouts uh, to talk about you know some some pretty um, interesting conversations around housing needs, some of the challenges that we're facing, or perceptions of challenges. Um, and people's ideas for opportunities. And um, I jumped around a bit <laughs> from room to room, so got a, got a sense of what was going on in, in different spaces. But um, you know, I think uh, maybe Rachel or Jean, if either one of you wanted to share you know, things you heard or sort of your ideas about the process, I, I mostly just wanted to mention that the forum happened. I thought it was successful. It's the first of many opportunities to engage um, we do have a form online uh, to, you know, have people continue to share their thoughts. Uh, the presentation slides, the recording of the meeting, basically all of the materials from all of the breakout groups are posted on the Housing Plan Implementation Committee's webpage on the town's website. Um, so if you didn't get a chance to engage, you can go there and then you can also uh, participate. But um, Rachel, Jean, do you want to add anything? I'll just add that, um, you know, I thought that it was a really productive conversation. I, I attended mostly to, to listen um, because we had also prior to that, um, the forums that were the smaller group forums that were hosted by uh, Barrett Planning, which, which were very productive, I, I thought as well. And some of those ideas made it into um, the, the, um, the presentation um, and some of the, the prompt questions that were that were asked during that, that meeting. Um, but I thought what was brought up was pretty wide ranging and I'm looking forward to, to their next steps. And I believe that there's a second community forum planned for later in the, in the summer. Yes, yep, definitely later in the summer and possibly another one sooner, as well as uh, we're talking about going to the farmer's market. We're talking about, you know, other sort of um, engagement opportunities, which we will be announcing. Jean, did you have any thoughts you wanted to share? I, mean, I don't really have anything to, to sort of add to what Jenny and Rachel said, other than what Jenny just closed with, which I think um, a real need and obligation to do a lot more outreach and community engagement over the process. It was nice to have 15 people there on the Zoom and I think the consultants handle it pretty well, but that's only 50 people. So I think, you know, um, I think that should be a next step. And just to mention something that I mentioned before, I think one of the um, things that needs to come out of the whole process is, is how we can enhance the inclusionary zoning dialogue, which wasn't highlighted specifically. Um, in the presentations, but it's something I mentioned during the sessions. Yeah, the only other thing I'll mention too that it was it was really interesting having come off of the night before the um, the bikeway um, discussion as well, which got into questions about housing and um, and access and um, you know all of the ways that our transportation. Um, is integrated with our commercial districts and our and our housing and 
um, it was it was actually a kind of a nice progression of of meetings, although it was a lot of evening <laughs> evening meetings in a row because I think then the open space was the, the following evening. But um, it it was actually kind of a really interesting cadence in the way that um, that those were all put together that week. Yeah, that was that was not planned. We we had, hoped, we had hoped to have the uh, the housing plan meeting the week prior, but um, we wanted to be sensitive to town meeting. Um, and yeah, the, I didn't mention the bikeway meeting, but um, that that uh, since you mentioned it, Rachel, um, that's part of a local rapid recovery plan uh, tri community planning process with Bedford and Lexington. And uh, it's basically through what's called the Massachusetts Local Rec Rapid Recovery Program, um, which is aimed at assisting communities to develop uh, recovery plans. And in this case, it's about plans to aid commercial areas. Um, and so they had a, a meeting on June 8th to talk about, um, basically to share that the consultant for that project shared uh, various, their assessments of each community and their research results. Um, and then people shared um, ideas about economic recovery in each for each community. So it wasn't just specific to Arlington. Um, but this was primarily focused on Arlington Heights, I should note, not all of Arlington, but uh, specific to Arlington Heights. And all of that information is also on uh, the town's website. And Allie Carter is actually the contact for that project. She's the economic development coordinator for the town. Um, so the, uh, and then on, as also mentioned, <laughs> the following night was the open space and recreation plan update virtual community workshop. And that one, uh, you know, similarly included a presentation by Horsley Witten, who is their technical consultant, um, talked about, and there were about 47 people who participated in that workshop. Um, it basically was an overview of the state, you know, open space recreation plan process and the requirements. Um, it also updated people on the accomplishments that have been made as a result of the current plan that we have in place. Um, the current plan was actually, has been in place for about seven years. So we extended it a couple of years. It's usually a five-year plan. Um, and then participants also joined breakout groups. I actually left the meeting at that point to attend a different meeting. So I don't have much to report there. And I don't believe any of you attended that meeting, but I'm not 100% sure, okay. Um, so each uh, the participants had a choice of, of being in a breakout group to talk about open space issues or recreation issues. And then there was a bigger group report out um, about ways that people can um, you know, make these improvements and opportunities that, that the, the consulting team might have missed. Um, all of the information on that project is also on the open space committee's website and they are also planning a future uh, community forum, as well as community engagement opportunities. Their community engagement plan includes things like talking posts at parks in town, um, where there will be um, some interesting opportunities to engage. Back to the housing plan, we're also talking about like a meeting in a box possibility where different groups can actually host their own meetings. And we've been talking about a similar thing for the open space plan. So uh, we are we are trying to explore ways to engage as many people as possible beyond the you know traditional formats uh, that we typically do, including some of the ways that we engage people during the transportation plan process. So I'm glad to answer any questions about that one as well. And that's that's it. All right. Uh, so I think agenda item number four, we are going to hold for our, our next um, meeting, um, which brings us to agenda item number five, which is open forum. So at this point, we will ask any member of the public wishing to speak to please use the raise hand function if you'd like to address the board. Uh, you'll have three minutes uh, to speak and I will ask that you uh, open by uh, identifying yourself by your first, last name, and address. So at this point, if any members of the public wish to address the board, please use the raise hand function. Okay, seeing none, we will close open forum. Uh, before we adjourn, are there any other uh, questions? Actually, you know what, we should go to the question of the next meeting, both the time 
and the location, whether we are looking at um, hybrid or remote. And uh, Jenny, I know that you were um, looking at this both from a time perspective. I believe that there was a request uh, to continue uh, with remote meetings at least for the um, for the for the immediate future. Um, the next meeting is on July twelfth. Um, technically, that meeting is when one ninety Mass Ave is supposed to come back, but I believe they will be submitting a withdrawal um, of that project. So I just I don't have it yet. So um, that is technically your next meeting, and I don't know if I'm going to have information about the properties by that time. So I don't, and I don't have any other public hearings uh, arranged for that evening either. So I, I guess I would ask this board whether or not you want to meet or what you would like to do with that meeting. And yes, technically you're scheduled for 7.30 PM in the conference room. Um, you've been meeting at seven on Zoom, but you were going to go back to a 7.30 time meeting, but I'm glad to schedule a, another Zoom meeting if you would like, and I can do it at seven versus 7.30, whatever you want. Great, so I'll, I'll turn it over to the other board members for, for their thoughts, but um, I'm hoping that we'll have our fifth board member by that point, and I'd love to welcome, you know, if nothing else, welcome them at that meeting, and then hopefully at a minimum vote on the, um, the new, uh, the new representatives of the redevelopment board on the uh, seven committees that we discussed yep. this evening, um, but I'll turn it over. Maybe I'll just run through the, the board members. Um, and then personally, I, I'd actually really like to to move to, to 7.30 again, now that I am going um, regularly into, into Boston and, and need to come come back in. Um, but I'll, I'll start with Ken and uh, get your thoughts on the meeting on the 12th. Uh, well, let me start off with the meeting on the, on the well, can the meeting on the twelfth? It, it doesn't really matter to me. I mean, because there's no, there's nothing really to discuss on the twelfth. Is that correct, Jenny? Um, well, I think to Rachel's point, the committee appointments and voting on that, welcoming yeah, but, the fifth member, and then the other thing is actually the um, MBTA communities was something that was requested as an update, but I, I feel as though I can send an email about that when I have um, information, but we can also talk about it. If we need to. Okay, I was referring more to like projects. No it, projects, it, there's, there's no public no, hearings, no. So there's, so there's no real project hearing. I don't mind having the Zoom meetings. Uh, and if there's a Zoom meeting, seven o'clock is fine with me. But if there's projects, I would like my wishes to have them in person um, you know, in the, uh, in in, a, in our regular meeting room, and I just thought that the, you know presentations were better. Uh, we actually got to more get more interactive, and we learned more about the project uh, that way there. And if we're having the meetings um, at, at the annex again, like this, uh, I would like to push for seven thirty because it's tougher to get to. I agree with you, Rachel, um, because everybody's back at work, sort of. And uh, so Zoom is seven thirty. At seven is fine. Seven thirty if we have there, and I have no problem continuing Zoom meetings until we have a project uh, for a uh, town meeting in, in 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 person meeting. That is, hopefully that makes sense. Jean, your thoughts? Um, yeah, a couple of thoughts. I don't really have any preference between seven and seven thirty start for the meetings. I, I had mentioned to Jenny and Rachel that I prefer to continue um, the Zoom meetings um, for a couple of reasons. One is I think they tend to perhaps get more participation by the public than in-person meetings. When we have our meetings in that small second floor conference room, it's really hard to accommodate a lot of people in those meetings. I think the solution might be some sort of hybrid, um, but I don't think, I think that would require some technology that the town might not have available right now. So I'd be interested to see what this committee that Redshill volunteered to be on comes up with as to how we might do that. I also have a personal 
reason for it. I have an autoimmune condition and I'm currently vaccinated, but not successfully vaccinated for COVID and for dealing with my doctor on that. And it's hard for me to be in small confined spaces with other people. So that's another reason why I'm interested in um, continuing remote meetings until you know something else can get worked out. Thanks, Jean. Um, yeah, we certainly want to respect your your health needs as well, and um, and make sure that um, you know wh when there when there's a time when when you're able to to meet in person that that we um, that we take that into account as well. As long as you I mean, know. I would, you know, if we're going to be meeting in person, I would wear a mask and probably stay as far away as everyone else from everyone else as I could. Fair enough. Uh, Melissa, any thoughts on time and um, your your thoughts on, on remote versus in person? Uh, no thoughts on, I mean, kind of no preference, I should say, on remote or in person at this point, especially for the next meeting. Um, 7.30 would probably work a little better. Great. So um, what I'm hearing, I know Melissa and I both, both have a preference for, for 730 if if that works for you Jenny Kin and and Jean to start at least the next meeting at, at 730 I know I know I would greatly appreciate it um, yes yeah, it's, it's posted as a meeting at 730 the only perfect. thing that's not posted is the zoom so if we're okay. going uh, remotely then I just would need to schedule that great so I have I have no issue with um, the next meeting um, you know and, until Jean's able to to, to meet in person um, for us to to continue to meet remotely, um, I, I would like to get back to. I think that the um, discussion, um, to, to Ken's point, I think that the presentations themselves tend to run more smoothly when we're able to see a presentation in person. So um, when we're able to do so, um, I'm I'm certainly looking forward to to getting back regularly to that. But um, I I want to make sure that we're all able to to comfortably do so. Yep, and I do anticipate that there will be other applications that will be forthcoming and that you know there will be public hearings at some point during the summer. Great, so we'll take those as they come and, and keep checking back in with each other yep. at the time. The other, the other item was the retreat date, which yeah. um, I believe we've uh, narrowed it down to the July 17th. Yes, the 17th Definitely. was the first was the um, preferred date and we had a backup date of the 24th. The new member is a, able to do the 17th. Perfect. Um, so I can find a location for that um, and let everybody know. It sounded like we wanted the morning but I actually didn't get a confirmed time. Um, the last time I think we met maybe like nine or it was quite early, I believe. So Certainly the earlier, the better for- It was when the learning. library opened. Yep. <laughs> um, anybody? Ken, have... you were, I think you're on mute. Yeah, I think we met quite early, but we didn't leave till like after one or something. We stayed quite, quite a bit. Mm -hmm. so I think it was really good. I'm excited about the meeting. Either eight or nine works for me. Is there any preference for start time? Eight. Eight or nine. Fine for me. Eight. 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 Sorry. <laughs> no, no, that's fine. Um, okay. okay. I'll okay. find a location. Yeah. I'll find a location okay. for us. And that would be an in-person meeting. We discussed that. A big room for Jean. Big room for me. We're outside. We're outside. Yeah. Perfect. I uh, as long as it's, as it's a the weather accessible agreed. location. And the right. weather, of course. Yeah. Right. And I hope you're all vaccinated because if you're not, then I won't be. Okay, good. I am too, but in there. Okay. Any other uh, any other discussion items before we move for our motion to adjourn? All right, there are motion. So motion. Second. Great. We'll take a roll call votes. Ken? Yes. Melissa? Yes. And I am a yes as well. Thank you very much, and we'll see everyone in a few weeks. 
Stay cool. Have a good evening. Thanks, everybody. Bye. Bye. Bye.